G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in last week's video, I talked to you guys about some of the changes I made to the fish room in regards to the additives that I use in the water to run the fish room. And in that video, I talked about changing over from Seacom products to Fish Keeper's Choice. In that video, I really went into detail about the reasoning why I changed from Seacom to Fish Keeper's Choice and the findings that I was seeing with observing the fish. So if you haven't seen that video, you can watch it right here. Also, in that video, I briefly mentioned at the start that I was going to also get into talking about the changes I made with the fish feed that I feed the fish. But in last week's video, I ran out of time to include that in the video and I really didn't want to make the video too long. So I've broken the video up into two parts and this week we're going to talk about the changes I made with the fish feed that I feed the fish, as well as the reasons why I changed to this brand. And before we get into today's video, I thought that I'd quickly mention that with this video, it is my 50th upload to my YouTube channel. So I've got 50 videos now on my channel. I really can't believe it. I wouldn't have gotten here without you guys subscribing, without you guys giving me constant feedback, and obviously liking the videos. It really does motivate me to keep producing informative videos. So obviously I really do hope you find these videos informative. Now, other channels might make a bit more of a fuss about reaching a milestone like this with 50 videos. I'm not gonna do that. I just thought I'd thank you guys for motivating me to continue to produce content for you. And I just wanted to make mention that I had reached that milestone. Now, onto the video. So guys, if you've been on my channel for a while now, you know that I've been Tanganyika pellet made by Tropical. This container holds about 520 grams of pellets. It's one litre size. And it cost me around 60 Australian dollars when I purchased this tub. Now, I purchased this tub before I even started building the fish room, so it's lasted me quite a while. But obviously, as I have bought more fish and bred more fish, I've gone through this tub quicker and quicker. If you go on eBay and you search for this item, you'll find the price to be around 100 Australian dollars. So it's quite expensive. It's jumped up around 40 Australian dollars since I last purchased this tub. Now, the option was there to buy it again. But like a lot of things in life, price plays a part in your decision making of what things to buy. And considering I always tell you guys to keep varying the fish's diet, I decided to change things up a bit. I don't solely feed this food. If you've seen my other videos, you'll know that I feed live foods as well as a lot of frozen foods for these guys. I don't solely feed this pellet. If you really want to see the difference, say the colour difference of a food, you pretty much have to feed that food solely for a good, at least a month to six weeks, I believe. There are brands out there that do suggest that with colour enhancing foods. There are obviously some fillers in this product, as many other pellet foods do have, such as cereals and yeast, and this product does contain them. However, they aren't high on the list of ingredients. So when you're reading the list of ingredients on fish food, the first lot of ingredients are the most ingredient in that food. And yeast and cereals are pretty much halfway through the list of this food. So they are in there, but they're not high on the list. So that's a good sign straight off the bat. But like I said to you guys, I like to vary the fish's diet, and I suggest you guys do that. So why don't I practice what I preach? Now, the opportunity arose for me to try something when I won a fish food at my cichlid club. And this is the product here. New Life Spectrum Algae Max. It's a very, very small container compared to the Tropical. This was a prize at a raffle. So I thought I'd give it a try. The opportunity arose at perfect timing, really. And within a few weeks, I honestly believe I am noticing a change in the fish's coloration. Now, I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. You can't really ever be 100% sure that this is the reason. Like I said, I feed the fish a wide range of live foods, frozen foods, and pellet foods. So it could be any one number of things that is changing the fish's colour. For example, I recently started feeding my fish live daphnia. That might be playing a role. I'm sure it is playing a role. The daphnia I feed to my fish is enriched with spirulina. Spirulina is known as a colour enhancer, so it would make sense to also believe that the daphnia are playing a role in changing the fish's colour. However, when you look at the ingredients on this New Life Spectrum food, this Algae Max food, it really blew my point. I'm going to have to pop them on the screen here. You guys can pause the video and you can have a read of this ingredients list. The well, point is, the quality of ingredients on this food blew me away. I had no intention of going to New Life Spectrum before I won this food in the raffle. And because of that, I decided to purchase more New Life Spectrum food. 
So I've got their cichlid food here, and I've also got a more expensive food here called Ultra Red. Now this is a red color enhancing food, but I don't have any red fish. But I decided to trial it out on my Lampralotus ocellatus gold, just to see what it would do to it. I'm feeding this solely to one tank in the fish room, and then feeding another tank other foods, excluding this. So I'm running a little bit of an experiment to see if there is a difference in the colour change of the fish. I personally think I can see a slight difference, but I don't know if you guys will be able to. So I'm just going to insert some footage here, showing you one tank and showing you another tank. And see if you guys can pick out which tank is being solely fed the ultra red. One of the other reasons why I changed from the Tanganyika pellet by Tropical is because those pellets are large, they're three millimeters wide. These are one mil to 1.5 mil wide. The majority of cichlids I keep are dwarf cichlids from Lake Tanganyika. As you can see, they're small. However, like with all pellets, I also do soak these in aquarium water for around 10, 20 minutes before I feed them, just to soften them up so the fry can easily eat them as well, even though these pellets are small. So I might show you feeding some of these pellets to the guys and see how quickly they take them up. Okay guys, I'm going to feed them the Algae Max. I'm not going to soak these pellets, I'm just going to drop them in. You'll be able to see the small size that these pellets have. That even my brevis are able to swallow them whole without any soaking. They sink, I don't let them float on the water. Grab a pinch of pellets, dip them underneath the water and then let them go. I don't drop them on the surface of the water because they'll basically just get sucked into the plumbing and down to the sun. So it'll be a bit of a waste. So you can see the pellets settled on the ground there. The fish are picking them off. I don't have to pre soak these pellets because they're basically the perfect size for the majority of my cichlids. And you can see it's not really clouding up the water. I heard a lot of people say that New Life Spectrum food in the past did cloudy up the water a lot. But this doesn't seem to be the case when you drop the pellet directly into the aquarium water. It does, however, cloudy up the water if you pre soak the pellets for the fry. So guys, I'm going to feed my Neolamprologus brevis fry and I've also got Judochromus ragani in here as well. You can see they're very excited that they're about to get fed. These pellets have been soaking in aquarium water for about 10 minutes now. So I'm going to feed them to the fish and let's see how they go. So take note of how clear the water is at the moment and we'll see how cloudy the water actually gets as they consume the food. Now I'm not sure if it's coming out on camera, but the tank does physically look cloudier. There are a lot of particulate in the water, especially when I compare it to the aquariums on the other side of this tank. But that is to be expected. If you're new to my channel, you might not be aware that I post weekly videos every Tuesday at 7 a.m. Sydney time. So be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on my regular content. So I really hope you found that video informative. If you did, please consider subscribing, commenting, and liking this video. Also, if you're new to my channel, you might not be aware that I've had this fish room running for well over a year now. And all the videos of the progress and the build of this fish room are included right here on my YouTube channel. So why don't you watch this video here, which is about me building the fish room and designing the plumbing. Or this video right here, which is my full fish room tour for 2020. Anyway guys, I'm going to wrap this video up right now. So thanks heaps for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! This lasted me well over a year. And when I put...